What's up, guys? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Morning Show for Thursday, March 1st, 2018. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Austin Creed. Hello, hello. Beautiful. Good to see you guys again. I'm happy that it gets to be me and you on the show. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I, I'm a little rusty on the morning show. It's been, mm-hmm. it's been a while, especially since I've had to host it. So it's, yeah. it's good that I get Congratulations. to do it with my good friend, Austin Creed, here. Um, how long are you here for? Uh, my flight leaves at 5. Five, okay. Good. We had another day <laughs> with this beautiful man. Uh, how weird is it that it's March? Very oh, weird. Very like weird. that just happened so quickly. February it was just a, a yeah. flash. Not even weird that it's March. Weird that it's March 2018. That's weird too. If I feel like if I was still in school, I would be still messing that up. It's not oh, often 100%. I have to write 2018 yeah. anywhere, so so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Uh, this is the Kind of Funny Morning Show each and every weekday right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We come at you with all of the nerdy news you need to know about. Uh, you can get it on iTunes or SoundCloud or now on Spotify. Please go on Spotify and like and subscribe. We're making our way up the charts there and it's really cool to see. Um, Spotify went public today. Oh, and, really? And I would like to think it's because now that we're oh. on there, they're like, we're making enough money. And we're getting enough eyes that we can like well, really let me, make, let me make go a on, big splash. We're on Spotify right now. <laughs> I'm gonna do the deal. <laughs> Help out the numbers. Um, and then also, if you're watching live on Twitch right now, we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Uh, or if you had Amazon Prime, you can use Twitch Prime, which is your free subscription every month. It's uh, every 30 days you need to re-up it. But now there's some new thing called the Twitch Prime subscription and loot reminder. I'm not entirely clear on what this is, but from what I've been told, it sounds like every once your thing is up, you'll get a little notification asking if you want to resubscribe, which is really nice, uh, making it a little easier for you guys to support us and make our lives better. So thank you for that. Uh, if you do the, the sub, you, you get the emotes, private chat time, giveaway, you get to play games with us, all of that stuff. I saw you guys playing mm-hmm. games all through the night last night. We played Monster Hunter on my channel, Up, Up, Down, Down, on YouTube. Go check it out. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And hit that notification bell mm-hmm. so you can watch the videos as soon as they pop up rather than having tons of them fill your inbox at a later date. You got to ring that bell, um, man. got to ring so, that bell. So, yeah, last night we played Monster Hunter for four and a half hours. Well... On stream for four and a so half hours. So that's the thing. It's You guys played on stream for four and a half hours, and then this morning you came in and you're like, I went home and just kept playing. Yeah. How long did you play there? Maybe another two, three hours. Do you think there's a problem, or do you, is it good? Not at all. I am I made it here on time. Mm-hmm. There's food coming. Yes. I feel like I don't look too tired. No, I, not I feel kind of tired, but I always feel kind of tired, so I'm just, I'm always in like a like a sleepy haze Yeah. whenever you see me. That's my eyes that's your are secret. always... I'm yeah. always sleepy. Always, always yeah. sleepy, so I oh, never seem sleepy to people because they never see me actually sleepy. Um, but yeah, it's 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 the best. And it doesn't it doesn't get old. Yeah. And the thing is we were talking about last night. So I feel like a lot of times if somebody's on stream, they are usually gonna be, I don't know, a little more over the top, a little more turned on because there's mm-hmm. a camera. Mm-hmm. Like while playing Monster Hunter during stream, everybody was just like super chill the it's whole time, time. Except like at the end of, of of events when things happened. But like you you gotta get in. You gotta get in. I don't think that I can, man. Dive it's in just, head first, it's just man. not. So here's the thing, I I don't understand you. You are an enigma to me because <laughs> Why is that? because you work so hard. Like your travel schedule is the most insane thing ever. Like pretty much any athlete is has a crazy travel schedule. Yeah. But WWE doesn't stop. There's not seasons yeah. that you guys are going on. You it's just a nonstop thing. Now there's multiple pay per views a month, right? Is that is that correct? Something like that. And I just like don't. It. I don't understand how on top of that. You run a YouTube channel, a successful YouTube channel, yeah. that you're just pumping the content out for. And then on top of that, you come hang out with us schmucks. Well, I got to. Making a I bunch of to. content with us. And then during the night, you're just playing more Monster Hunter. There's only so many hours <laughs> in a day, Austin. I actually <laughs> unlocked a secret, and, and there's actually 32 hours in my days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got so it. So it's. It's once you level up thing. to, once you get through Monster Hunter rank 14 or whatever it is, you unlock a couple extra <laughs> yeah, yeah. extra hours. And then on top of that, you actually work out and do like real, you know, well, you health know. stuff. Gonna, <laughs> oh my God. Pull the, God, you make LaCroix look even better. <laughs> remember LaCroix? And speaking, speaking of that, Cool Greg, can you pull up the store? <laughs> right over there, if you go to kindoffunny.com slash store, you can uh, get a whole bunch of our, our things. Not this jacket I'm wearing yet. It will be there eventually, but you can get the LaCroix shirt, you can get the Games Daily shirt, party mode, all that stuff. It's beautiful, and you can look half as good as this, maybe, if you try very, very hard. If you get this shirt, you will get these muscles. Oh, my God. Guaranteed. 
I can put a guarantee on that. There's an asterisk somewhere, but <laughs> I can put that guarantee on that. Uh, our sponsor this week is Audible.com, but we'll get to that later. Right now, I want to get in the news. A light news day, by the way. I want to let everyone know, so don't get too excited. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to get through the news, and then we're going to get into an AMA section where we're going to talk to the chat. And so uh, queue up all your questions you got from our boy Austin over here, and then we'll get to all of those. Uh, oh, I messed up. I messed up. There's some housekeeping I got to get through. I, like I said, I'm rusty on this. Uh, the Oscar Party Watch Along is this Sunday at 4 p.m., so join us there, 4 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to be watching the, the Oscars, so you should watch along with us and see what happens, see if there's any big surprises. I'm hoping Get Out wins. I feel like that would be a, a crazy thing, and it's not likely, but I would be awesome if it did. Yeah, I want it. Uh, have, you, have you watched a lot of the contenders for film of the year? I'm really not into like Oscar season stuff and everything. I, my biggest thing... Is uh, so I know lots of people before they go see movies, they'll check Rotten Tomatoes or like their local movie critics and stuff. And it's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know those people. Mm -hmm. So like them telling me what's good and what's bad, like it's cool to see people win awards and get recognition yeah. from like their peers and all that stuff. But like I don't know for me. So okay, prime example, my favorite two movies on this planet, a Goofy movie. Oh my God, I love you so much. Best story of a father son ever told. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing things eye to eye. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and White Chicks. Okay, okay. Amazing. Solid choices. Great movies to me. Didn't necessarily win all the awards mm -hmm. in the world, but you know, that's that's what I like. Did you watch a goofy movie too? Oh yeah. An extremely I have goofy it. movie. An, ex yes. an extremely goofy oh, yes, movie. I have it. it is like probably the biggest gap in my Disney viewing knowledge. Yeah. I need to change that. I hear it's on Netflix. Cool Greg, are you down to, to watch an extremely goofy movie with me? Can I can I come back and we just do a viewing? Party? Yes, we should definitely okay. do that. Well, a goofy the first movie first. stands up, man. It really does so much. My my really girlfriend does. Gia had never seen it, and I was like, we got to change this. So we, we watched it, and she's she's kind of hard when it comes to a lot of the animation stuff. She's yeah. not the biggest fan. She likes the the real true crime, gritty. Real, no, yeah. fuck that shit. Goofy movie, and she watched it. She's like, I can't even hate on this. Man. Yeah, it's it's just it's solid and it's good. And yeah, the father son relationship, great storytelling. Oh man, it's so so <laughs> damn good. Uh, and then reminder: at the five dollar or above level, you can tip, and we will read your tips. Or at the five hundred bit level, uh, we will read your tips as well. And tonight there is a community game night, PUBG on PC, kindoffunny.com slash Discord. Be there or be square. And now we can rewind and go back to a cool Greg. First news story of the day. This comes from Tube Filter. TwitchCon is once again changing locations. Ooh. 2018 edition Twitch's TwitchCon to bring streamers to the Bay Area between October oh, 26th and 28th. Hey. Bringing it back, bringing it back. Uh, but it will not be in San Francisco. It is going to be in San Jose. Okay. Uh, so we'll be in San Jose for its 2018 edition, which will begin on October 26th and run through the 28th. The three-day TwitchCon, first established in 2015, brings together fans and streamers for a series of events, panels, and keynote addresses. This year, the venue of choice will be the newly remodeled McHenry Convention Center in San Jose. It's a great, great place. I've been there before. I haven't been mm -hmm. there since they've remodeled, but it is dope. Uh, we went to TwitchCon, I guess the first one, in San Francisco mm -hmm. in 2015, and it was all right. Yeah. And it, if I'm being honest, it wasn't our favorite uh, yeah, convention. Yeah, the budding convention. Uh, yeah, it was very, very early in its, uh, in its lifespan, and uh, a lot of the booths they had were a little weird. Like, I, I remember the... Um, the fuck the hell thing Red Cross okay. the Red Cross booth <laughs> was popping off because yeah. they were like giving out t-shirts and shit and people were going crazy <laughs> and it's like when that's a draw I don't know maybe you got some work to do uh, but from what I heard the last couple of years where they were down in San Diego it did get a lot better and yeah. so I'm interested to see them come back to the Bay Area San Jose a little farther than I'd like to go <laughs> but not too far about an hour south of yeah. here have you been to TwitchCon? Uh, I have not uh, my friend that went this the, to the last year's, sent uh, uh, they sent me some hoodies or not okay. hoodies, sorry onesies. And so I rock a Twitch onesie at home every once in a while, and I feel real good. good. I'm a big onesie guy. Yeah, yeah, onesie with the butt flap, especially. Oh yeah, um, got to keep it classy. It's so useful. It's like it's real life. Because um, a lot of people with the butt flap, they're like, yeah, but then you can't pee. You, you just can. gotta you get just pull it around. Yeah, you gotta pull the whole butt flap around, and then you're good. Yeah, and you're you're totally golden. <laughs> <laughs> yes. People in the chat are saying PUBG oh, was last. Night. Oh, PUBG was last night. I wasn't supposed to be on the show today. <laughs> last minute, I got thrown on. Greg Miller's not saying that, so that's why he's not saying it. Greg Miller? Okay, great. He's in there. I love you, Greg. God, doing the best I can here. Um, 
You're a big convention guy. Yes. That's another thing. On top of all the WWE stuff, on top of Up, Up, Down, Down, and mm-hmm. every, all the guest appearances and everything, mm-hmm. you're also at every convention ever, it seems like, doing elaborate cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just show up. Like, you show up. <laughs> well, because, like, if you're going to go, you got to go. So we've been going to Dragon Con for 11 years now. Dragon Con is Labor Day weekend uh, in Atlanta every year, and it's, like, it's literally the best weekend of life. So... I, I mean, you're, you're from Atlanta, yeah. so I'm sure that there's some nostalgia tied there. Yeah. Uh, everybody I've ever met that has been to Dragon Con, mm-hmm. there are two conventions that when people have been there and they talk to you about it, they act like it was this religious experience. Mm-hmm. Evo mm-hmm. and Dragon Con. Yes. Evo's like, it's the best party ever. And it's they'll just keep pushing that. Dragon Con. And let me know if this is incorrect mm-hmm. or correct. Everyone I've ever talked to that tried to convince us to go is like, everybody just fucks. It's just a lot of people fucking. I mean, it's a convention, so I'm sure there's stuff going on behind closed doors. Like, uh, so when my friends and I go, we just have, it's like it's like our uh, our cosplay Super Bowl. Because my dude, Michael Mosley, check him out, he's fantastic. He creates all these super elaborate cosplays and then for the day, and then at night, uh, we have like uh, more naked cosplays, essentially. Uh-huh. So like, we're like, We'll okay. mix like uh, Power Ranger underwear models. Okay. So we'll have like, if I'm like the Black Ranger, I'll have like a Power Axe, but then like a uh, Speedo on with like, the Black Ranger mm-hmm. symbol on it. So you so have the like, rumors are true, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's, read between the lines there. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I'm, there um, to, I'm there to hang out. Is there any cosplay you're working on that you, you can talk about or are you keeping yes. things close to we, the... We talked about it uh, yesterday a little bit. Uh, so we're going to Awesome Con in mm-hmm. DC at the end of this month, because it's March now. Um, and we're doing some Black Panther stuff. I'm going to be Killmonger Holy with all the shit. All like the scars Ooh, or rivets. How are you going to do that? My guy can can handle. You got it. it? Yeah, That's very excited. Be. 3D paint. Okay. So we'll be making a video doing that. It's a little tutorial. So you can check that out most likely on Up Up Down Down my YouTube channel. Go subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and hit that notification bell so you know when the videos pop Just up. Got to ring that bell, man. Mm-hmm. Got to do it. Uh, next news story. Greg Miller. I need you. Uh, Better bring out the pro for this one. You big into comics? Uh, so I I go back and forth between being able to read a lot and then doing not. all the other yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is some amazing news for people like me, and Greg Miller. Here. Uh, we're not, no, we already talked. We got the Monster Hunter out. Uh, all right. Well, it's never out. We talked about the bandit. Yeah. We got a bunch of gold nugs last night. Oh my night. god! You can watch it. YouTube.com/slash <laughs> up up down down. Jesus. Uh, this comes from IGN. Never heard of him. Hydra Cap Rider takes over Marvel's Amazing Spider-Man comic. Uh, this comes from our boy Joshua Yale over at IGN. Writer Nick Spencer and artist Ryan Otley are taking over Marvel Comics' relaunched Amazing Spider-Man series as part of the publisher's Fresh Start relaunch that starts in May. Spencer was the source of much controversy over the past few years as he unfolded a story where Captain America was revealed <gasps> to be a secret Hydra agent. Duh. Otley is best known for drawing Invincible with writer Robert Kirkman. Let's just stop there. Cool, Greg, can you pull up this picture? Click it? Yeah, make it big. Click it! Whoa. Nice. That's big. That's, a That's real big. Story. I That's love that. Spider-Man. Yeah, you just leave it there. I like that. Uh, so, Greg, how does this make you feel? Like this? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that, looks, that looks very similar to, to, see it. to Shirtless Spider-Man's dance. Oh, uh, that's weird. That no, is weird. No, it's a weird coincidence. That. That's a weird thing. I don't know. No, uh, look, at, look at this art. This art looks awesome. Yeah, do, I love Ryan Otley. Ryan Otley has been so busy with Invincible for 15 years. <laughs> it's nice to see him be able to branch out and do something cool and different and... Spider-Man. His art's so awesome. Ryan Otley's probably my favorite, one of my favorite artists in the games. What up, Babs Tarn? I'm sorry. This news Babs to me is, is, is so good. This is perfect. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, with Invincible closing, that's really sad. Yeah. I love Otley's work. You yeah. obviously love Otley's work. Yeah. We got the, the commission where he, he yeah, did you. Yeah, he drew me, yeah. Uh, but seeing this, it's crazy because, you know, Spider-Man has such an iconic cla- uh, cast of characters, and see him in that style is super cool to me, but also, getting a relaunch of Spider-Man, thank God. Yeah. Thank, this is what I want. Seeing this, yeah, I'm like, all right, let's bring it. Spider-Man. I know, it's, it has, it's been... It's I really been. haven't heard an origin story for Spider-Man. I really want to motivations. Ah, uh, because I haven't been liking the, the comics in recent, like, three years. You haven't given a shot since that you write... They Some took, of them I pop, I've been popping in, right. and I'm just not... I'm not feeling it. So is this a relaunch from the ground up? Like uh, I have no, it's a fresh start. I actually need to, to go in and they've done a, understand. Marvel's doing a whole bunch of fresh starts right now. It's been hard for me to keep up. Yeah. So but which this Spider-Man coming in is it? This is Peter. This is Peter. Okay, this is, yeah. Okay. It ain't Miles. Okay. Miles. So there's Amazing Spider-Man, and now there's Spectacular Spider-Man's coming yeah. back as a relaunch. I get confused. It's very confusing. Which, which Spider-Man universe we're in, and then that animated one is coming out. 
Enter the Spider-Verse, the movie? Yeah. Jesus. It looks awesome. I cannot wait. That's that's so the movie good. I'm looking forward to most this year. Really? More wow. than Infinity War, more than Star Wars. Uh, you know there's a movie called Aquaman coming out. Same day as Spider-Man. Which one are you going to see? And Bumblebee. Which one are you going to see? I'm going to see all three. It's going to be back to back to back, man. It's going to be a very okay day. And Just, then Spider-Man's going to make gonna it awesome. Yeah. Very okay. <laughs> I'm going to end with Spider-Man. I'm going to end with Spider-Man and it'll be great. Anyway, that's all I got for you. I, love I was, it. I I was really excited about it. <laughs> um, I'll tell you too, you know what? Right around here-ish is that Twitch button we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? I like it. Yeah, you like, I like it? it? Yeah. Okay. I don't like that it's not, it clicks and says, hey, you got loot available, or hey, you got the sub available. But when you click on it, because like right now, my sub's been given away, so it just says loot. I click on it, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you got Fortnite loot. But the, then it's not like, it's not like hyperlinked. No, like it I look doesn't somewhere else. I mean, it's day mm -hmm. one of it, so we'll They're see. They're it, it was that Twitch Prime subscription, right? Yeah. So, my hair's loose, because it's raining. Oh, man. Out. Next news story, this one's for Cool Greg. It comes from DoubleXL.com. Mm -hmm. Forbes has released its annual wealthiest hip-hop artist list, and the entrants in the top five aren't much different than last year, although there is a change at the top. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen. Cool My Greg. man. Get ready. Dude. Hova. Let's do it. While Diddy came in first in 2017 ahead of Jay-Z, Hove now sits in first, upping his net worth from $810 million to $900 million. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the rising value of his Armand de Brignat champagne. What? What it's are you doing? I need, I, need, I need Jen for this. I don't know how to. With that to, much money, what do you do? I don't know. Nick, Matt, and I were having lunch yesterday, and we we happened to be downtown because we were doing a, a little venue shopping yeah. for the kind of funny prom. Okay. And uh, we went to the the mall where there's this big Nordstroms. It's like a giant towering building. Yeah. At the very top, there's a cafe, the Nordstroms Cafe. Mm -hmm. It ain't fancy, but because it's on the top downtown, it feels fancy when you're sitting there eating your prepackaged salad. Yeah. <laughs> looking out on the city, right? And we're just looking, and, and Matt was just pretending he's a rich guy, and he's mm -hmm. like, "I'm worth ten billion. I don't know why he was using the voice, but he, he was <laughs> definitely <laughs> using the voice. He's like, "I'm gonna buy that building, then I'm gonna buy that building, then." I'm going to tear this one down just because. And it's just like, he was just going through this whole thing. But he's like, no, but seriously, if you have that much money, at what point does your life just stop kind of rising with yeah. you? Because it's like, yeah, you make more money, you spend more money. Yeah. You get nicer things. You get bigger houses. You get bluer cars. I understand, yeah. right? I understand how this goes. But at what point does that stop? You yeah. just go, now there's just money. Exactly. Because like, it's okay, so I'm not super materialistic in the sense of like, oh, I want a big house or I want a fast car. Like, I just want like a full arcade. Mm -hmm. But like once I have that and I want to keep getting games, like arcade cabinets aren't like $2 million. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with $900 million if you just want to play video games? Like I'm if content, you just want to play video I'm games. content with just like super fast Wi-Fi and Monster Hunter Ooh. and like and Chipotle mm -hmm. and I'm good. Yeah, I don't need to be doing that on a yacht. I guess Shouts it'd be cool. Chipotle. I don't need to be. Yes, that's I love the thing. Chipotle. It would be cool, but My you God. can rent the yacht. You know what I mean? But I don't, I don't, I don't even want to be on a boat. I don't yeah, like. I don't like boats I don't like either. Water. I don't like boats at you know? all. <laughs> it's just too much. I might. You know what? I would probably invest in like a, uh, some sort of company that's going to try to explore the mm -hmm. the ocean floor because there's like seventy percent of the world or something crazy. And we like got to figure. There's probably we don't some, know what's in there. Yes, no, Aquaman's down there somewhere. <laughs> We gotta find him so we Doing can something. make his uh, way out for his debut on December 21st for his hit movie, Aquaman. We'll Thanks see. for that, guys. We'll that see how that great. goes. Well, yeah, no, so, I mean, Joe, Jay might be number one spot. Diddy isn't too far behind, increasing his net worth to $825 million. So this is nuts, man. Like, we're, we're, it's a race to the first billion for uh, hip-hop artists. Who will it be? Is your money on Jay, Greg? Always, man. Because I think that's the I've key. I've been smart. That's the key to all <laughs> to all of this is I think that it hits a point when you make money mm -hmm. that all you want to do is make more money. It's uh, not even about spending the money. It's just about then using the money to make more money. Uh, I I, I that. mean more power to you. It's fantastic and congrats. I just I don't know what I would do with all mm -hmm. that. Like if I, I won the lottery or something, I, don't I know. couldn't handle it all. Mm -hmm. I could barely handle making a choice of where I want to eat for lunch. Yeah, right. On normal people, much less budgets. where you want to invest two point nine billion dollars. Uh, next story. This comes from IGN. Tarantino's Manson movie gets a title. Pitt DiCaprio set to star. Ooh, let's go. I like Leo a lot. My girl Lucy O'Brien writes over at IGN, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are joining forces with Quentin Tarantino once again for his movie based around the Manson family murders, officially titled once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm. It's a fun name okay. for a horrible thing. Okay. Uh, Tarantino has described the movie as, quote, a story that takes place in Los Angeles in 1969 at the height of hippie Hollywood. 
The two lead characters are Rick Dalton, Leonardo DiCaprio, former star of a Western TV series, and his longtime stunt double Cliff Booth, Brad Pitt. Both are struggling to make it in a Hollywood they don't recognize anymore, but Rick has a very famous next door neighbor, Sharon Tate. Hold on, he ordered bacon. Around. He ordered the bacon. You Thank gotta you. get that bacon. Bacon and eggs, one, one, one thing in here is for Kevin. Oh, one thing. Of course. Of course. Yes. Can, of course. Can, 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 can there's food being ordered. Sure. <laughs> you need silverware? Uh, let's see. Nope, there's some in here. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Kevin. A lot of people are bringing Thanks, up guys. Dr. Dre. I brought you a, a bouquet, no, no, so was he not on the bouquet of bacon. This is Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. No problem. I already closed the story. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got some bacon. Show. Oh, nice. Austin's hungry. Woo! Would you like some what, bacon no, and eggs? I, where'd you get it from? Bacon, bacon. There's a place called Bacon, bacon. Yeah. Bacon, bacon. I do not know Bacon, they bacon. Is the bacon truck. good? Oh, hey. good. Where's Bacon, bacon? Yeah. So like I. Oh my god. Oh, bacon. so crispy. Uh, it's gonna be loud. That was a good bite. Like I thought, Dutch Dre got bumped up for that one move, but he wasn't making big moves besides that. So he's been at number three, and he's still at number three. But did he ever hit? A, he hit a billion though. He made for that a, one, and then that was that one major move he had. But then that didn't. But keep okay, him but in he the did lead. it though. Uh, he crossed a billion. Did he for that deal? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I wasn't talking about a billion. We're talking about the richest guy, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Tarantino's ninth film will open in theaters on August 9, twenty nineteen, coinciding with the fiftieth anniversary of the Manson family murdering, uh, murdering Tate and committing the La Bianca murders. Turned to the last word with Di DiCaprio on Django Unchained, my favorite movie of all time. That's your favorite movie? Oh, yeah. It really? Is, uh, yeah. I know you have Goofy movie, and I love that, no, too. No, no, no. I'm no judging. Django, like for me, was like one of those movies where I went into it knowing nothing. Yeah. And just, it. I thought it was a great story. Mm -hmm. The acting was superb. Mm -hmm. The comedy was on point. And the style of it. Mm. Oh, my God. I fucking loved it. When yeah. Tupac music starts playing, they're just shooting everything <laughs> up. It was so unexpected. Yeah. I, just, I loved it. Dude, It's so it's very intense, like, um, uh, and not to get on, like, a, a racial high horse, but, like, knowing, hearing stories about the things that happened to, to black people in that time and, like, seeing certain images, like, in that movie, like, when they had her in the, like, the, in the metal casket thing out in the sun. Yeah. It's, like, it's just fucked yeah, up. Yeah, man. Like, that, that happened. Like, my God. But I thought they did such a good job of, like, showing it and, like, uh, while making, like, the movie that they did, like, still being respectful to mm -hmm. everything that happened. But the one scene that got me was, like, the guy getting eaten by the dogs. Oh, man. I was like, I don't know if I can, I can Keep I can going. Watch this. I, dude, so intense. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> it's real, but it's real good. Yeah. And you know about the scene with Leo where he cuts his hand? Yeah, it was improv. Great. Ah! If you don't know, there's a scene where Leonardo DiCaprio is like firing up and talking and getting intense, and he slams his hand on the table and like breaks a glass, but it cuts him open. But it's like it's like gushing. So rather than stopping the scene, he just kind of like holds his mouth on it to try to stop the blood. And by the end of the scene, he's wiped blood all over her face, like, and she's just going with it. And dude, it's it is amazing. It's like one of the best things I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, so freaking cool and horrible, but cool. Big Kevin, get over here. Mm -hmm. It looks like you got a review to give. If you're in the San Francisco area and you're like, man, I really need some good bacon. Bacon, bacon. They got you, bro. <laughs> Shut up. And it's not baking bacon. It's it's bacon, like a piece of bacon and a piece of bacon. Yeah. Oh, man. That is, the, oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this? The food truck? No, food I don't. The food truck used to come to IGN. Not... Like, you know, the little yeah, 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 yeah. I, don't, I never had it. Nick well, used to get them all the time. I'm sorry. I'm not it's all good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Audiobooks are great for helping you be a better you, whether you want to feel healthier, get motivated, or learn something new. Everyone wants to learn something new. Uh, millions of Audible members access performances by entertainers, magazines, and amazing narrators. You can search by title or author or browse by category. Uh, you can see all the New York Times bestsellers or the Audible bestsellers. Nick has been listening to live from New York, and he's been loving it. That's the, the history of Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. yes. which is very, they got, very uh, interesting. They got Gucci's stuff. autobiography. They on also that. have Gucci Man's autobiography, mm -hmm. and if, if that's more up your alley, Gucci. Cool Greg wanted to recommend. Batman on the chain with the V cuts. <laughs> Audible members get a credit every month, good for any audiobook, regardless of price, and unused credits will roll over to the next month, so 
You can always just buy more later. That's great. Mm -hmm. Didn't like your audiobook? You can exchange it. No questions asked. Whisper sync for voice. What is whisper sync, you ask? You can switch back and forth between reading and listening to the audiobook across many devices, including Amazon's Kindle and Echo, without ever losing your place or missing a word. Uh, you can get an audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash KF. Or you can text KF to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash K-F or text K-F to 500-500. Thanks to Audible for supporting Kind of Funny Morning Show. For a free audiobook with a three with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash K-F or text K-F to 500-500. <laughs> Everybody just text K-F to 500-500 just to see how that process works. Mm -hmm. That's some mumbo jumbo there. Bacon, bacon outside of prom. <laughs> There's some key things here. Some key, depending on what venue we actually use, that's either going to be super possible or super <laughs> impossible. But if it's impossible, it's, I'm going to try to figure it out to make it possible because that's a good idea. That's a damn good idea. Yo, this is so good. Yeah, I love how I had one bite of bacon and it already just <laughs> made my day. Bacon's a magical thing. It really, um, you hear, um, you listen to Jim Gaffigan, comedian. Jim Gaffigan. No. So. He does this bit talking about bacon. He's talking about the pig and how it's it's magical because it can take you can feed a pig an apple, <laughs> which is essentially garbage, mm -hmm. and it turns it into bacon. <laughs> 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 that is great. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna get into the deep dive topic of the day, which is an AMA with Austin Creed. Oh, um, you can ask me stuff. Let's do it. Uh, let's so cue up all of your questions in the chat, and we will get to that. Um, while you're doing that, I'm going to read you the P.S. I love this best friend, XOXO. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash best friend. Uh, just like, there's no name for who did the shout out, but they're shouting out blurbs slash Tyler. He makes our awesome weekly KFMS recaps, and he's great. You can follow him at blurb78 on Twitter. I have a feeling that Joey is the person that nominated him because of the way that that is phrased. Uh, blurbs, you do awesome work. Those kind of funny morning show recaps are hilarious, and they use Diddy's Bad Boys for Life as the soundtrack, which is fantastic. So thank you, Blurbs. Go follow them. Blurbs78 on Twitter. Mm. Let's see what we got going on okay. here. Fixed Hat. Wait, what? Fixed Hat 313 says, question for X. Has anyone ever been so far as really want to look more like? That's not a sentence. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I think, I think I understand what he's saying. I think he's saying, is there anyone that you've ever wanted to look like? Maybe. Maybe, I mean, answer that. I'll question. interpret it that way. So uh, the reason that I grew my hair out when I was a teenager was because I wanted to look like Lenny Kravitz. Because I believe that he is all that is man. And I wanted, I wanted, to, to, fly away. I wanted to embody him. And I love his music. He's, he's amazing. And he's uh, inspired by Prince, who's mm -hmm. also incredible. So I just grew it out, and then it just never stopped. And now he doesn't have as much hair anymore. So I tie my <laughs> back. <laughs> uh, Squeegee Ouija says, what is your favorite weapon in Monster Hunter? The Switch Axe, mm. it does a ton of damage, and I can hit really hard with it when I hit the R2 and switch the axe and do the thing. Do the thing? Yeah. Elemental damage, too. Oh, it's nice with the Switch Axe. Yeah? God, I love it. You begin to, to Final Fantasy fourteen. I know you were talking uh, about it yesterday. Yes, sir. I haven't yeah. played in a minute, so like I have to do it in chunks, and so there'll be like four months where I'm like all in, and then four months where I'm not, and then completely go all in for like six months, and then take like eight months off. Um, that's the first MMO that I really dove into because mm. World of Warcraft was too much for me because my roommate in college actually failed out because of World oh of Warcraft. God. Well, not because of World if of Warcraft. If only that was the, the only time that story has been told. I know, right? I feel like everyone has a friend. It's, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> he, so he ended up all right. <laughs> he told his professors that he had pneumonia mm -hmm. so he could sit in his room and play. But he was also dating this girl. She was upperclassman, super hot. She would like come over to our apartment and like cook for us. She was so nice, just like a, a, a good human, mm -hmm. right? He just stood her up like three times in a row, going on dates. And so she comes over to our apartment, banging on the door, and she's like, let me in! And we're like, so uh -oh. kind of like, oh my God, where is he? And he's like, oh, he's in his room. So the three of us kind of like let her in. She goes, where is he? I know he's in his room playing that game. And we're like, oh. Uh, and so she just blows past us and she damn near broke the door oh off, my God. Off, his, off, his, off the hinges to his room because he keeps it locked while he plays. So we just hear her yell at him. She breaks up with him. He pretty much fails out of college. And yeah. I was like, it's because That's a raid boss you don't want to face. No, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need that in my life. So I stayed away from MMOs. And then I played Final Fantasy XIV, Square Enix. 
What a great game. You can play it on the go, your PlayStation if you're traveling. Mm -hmm. You can play it on your computer. You can play it on your laptop so you can travel. You can play it in the airport. You can play it at home. You can play it wherever. You can play it wherever you, you want. Play with all your friends. So something I would definitely That's right. Pick up. At WrestleMania, you guys came out in the, the outfits. We did. We, we came out and cosplayed as Final Fantasy fourteen characters. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. The chat is moving really fast, so I'm mm -hmm. trying to I'm trying to f catch up to where I was. Somebody, oh here we go. Herman Homeboy says, "I'm really curious about Xavier's Black Panther take." Oh well, you can actually get my whole take on it if you uh, go to the Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, <laughs> and uh, that'll be on Friday. So tomorrow you'll be able to listen to the episode where he, he goes into it. It's like a like a ten minute diatribe. It's Black, good. Black Panther. It's damn um, good. But short style is, I thought the movie was very good, very well done. Um, my favorite part was just them having those kente cloth shields when they started fighting each other. Just so dope. But uh, I'm a huge fan of Michael B. Jordan, uh, especially because he was in Creed. of Korean. course. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. And so I thought he did a really good job as Killmonger. But um, my favorite character, I have to say, was Claw. Really? Yes. He was... Probably my least favorite character. He was hysterical to me. Oh man, I thought it was ratcheted up a little too much. You think so? Yeah. I, I feel like I think it I started it. okay, and then once it got into, no spoilers, the interrogation scene, yeah. I was like, all right, you're just wacky <laughs> for the sake of being wacky. Yeah. It started not making sense. <laughs> but. It's so good. Him and, um, uh, what's it, uh, M'Baku? Mm -hmm. Him. Those are my two favorite characters from the movie, but I thought it was it was really good. If you M'Baku's haven't seen it, great. go see it. Go see it. ASAP. If yeah. you haven't seen it, something's like, Clearly wrong mm -hmm. with 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 life. You got to fix those things and go see Black Panther. It's a spectacle yeah. for sure. Uh, the Steve Nine X says, "Austin, you're making me hungry. What should I eat for lunch?" Bacon and eggs, bro. Good lunch. Good bread. Breakfast, Breakfast is just the best food. You can eat it any time. It really it will is. make you happy, especially when bacon's involved. One thing I don't understand is, and there might be some sort of. Uh, uh, explanation for this, some scientific food explanation. When people say, like, if I'm like eating pizza for breakfast, like, pizza for breakfast? Why would you do that? Because it's food. I feel like there's no designated food for the specific meal of the day. It's just food yeah. is food. People just choose to eat, like, bacon and eggs in the mm -hmm. morning, but bacon and eggs is good at night as well. Pizza's good in the morning. Cereal's good at four o'clock. It's true. I don't understand these social constraints we put on our food, and we need to break <laughs> them down. <laughs> Start today with me. Oh, man, uh, one of the long-going jokes we have here at Kind of mm -hmm. Funny is there was a time when we were traveling somewhere and Kevin was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go get some breakfast pizza. And Nick was like, what do you mean <laughs> breakfast pizza? Yeah. And he was just like, oh, it's pizza. He's like, Kevin, that's just pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevin's like, yeah. 100%. Breakfast pizza, man. So apparently the do you look like I like whatever is a meme that I just didn't know about. Oh, I don't know. We're, uh, we're out of the loop. But you got us. We got yeah. Rick Rolls. Yeah, apparently. we did. But we answered a question. King Edie says, how did Big E start throwing pancakes? Was it his idea? So the pancakes started because uh, we had a lumberjack match. Yes? Came in very excited. There's a delay. Breakfast pizza can also be pizza oh. with an egg on it, which egg. exists, and you can get it at many airports. Many airports, breakfast pizza, pizza it's with an egg. very good. <laughs> well, what constitutes breakfast? You know, I think legally, We're trying to break down the, the <laughs> binary standards of... <laughs> I heard that as well, and I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it starts today. <laughs> Fight for your rights. <laughs> uh, the pancake started because we had a lumberjack match randomly on SmackDown one day. And since there's three members in New Day, uh, I opted to uh, be on the outside of the ring because it would be way funnier to me to be a lumberjack but since I'm technically on the team, I'm not a lumberjack, I'm chief lumberjack. So I'm in charge of all the other jacks who are lumbering. <laughs> so this idea started to percolate like midday that day. And uh, so I said, well, if I'm gonna be a lumberjack, we gotta go full in on this. We're gonna cosplay just full lumberjack. So we tried to get like overalls and jeans and all that, and they were like, that's a little much. But I got the flannel and I got the beanie and I was gonna get a fake beard. And when I had the fake beard, they were like, that maybe no beard? And I said, well, what about pancakes? And they said, well, sure, you're a lumberjack. Why would you not have pancakes? It's like, of course. <laughs> so I uh, was super excited that we got the pancakes through, and then we started just tossing them around. And then the next week, uh, E looked at me and Kofi. He's like, oh, are we doing pancakes again? And we're like, yeah, sure, why not? 
and we went uh, and asked Vince, and we're like, hey Vince, can we go out with pancakes? And he goes, do you want to? I said, yeah. He goes, all right, cool. <laughs> and that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we throw pancakes, because it's funny to us. <laughs> What's up, guys? Go for it. Uh, Bizarre Monk says, what's your opinion of the WWF during the Attitude Era? Uh, Attitude Era was fantastic. It was awesome. It's what I grew up on. It's what made me want to be a professional wrestler slash sports entertainer. Um, but, I mean, wrestling, as with all things and all businesses, evolves. And if it's not evolving, then it's staying in the same place. And that's not interesting. That means it's dying. It's going to lose viewership. It's going to lose money. So it's got to evolve over time. And so where we are right now, this era, obviously very different from that era. Um, I, I like both for different reasons. Um, I think that there is something to be said about the creativity of this era because we are, uh, uh, we have a, a few more confines as to what we can do. So people used to refer to the Attitude Era as the Wild Wild West. You could just go out and do anything. Like all sorts of weapons and hit people in the head with chairs and like tables and all that stuff. So things were just wild. And so... Brawn and panty matches. Yeah. Which is nowadays yeah, not okay. That's, that's not something that <laughs> we should be doing. So, uh, so we have to use our brains to create a, a, a creative, interesting environment. So... Uh, as far as like Ecofi and myself, we try to think of things like like Shrek. So you know, it's a sh it's a movie for kids. But if you're watching as an adult and you're really watching, there's some stuff in there for you that kids aren't gonna get. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to do every time that we go out there, so that there's a little something for everybody uh, with our act. But at the same time, if you don't like our act, you might like someone else's. What's as long as something brings you to the table and brings you to the show. That's what's important. It's a variety mm -hmm. show, and you can yell, you can scream yay, you can scream boo, uh, but that's the beauty of it because you'll get that instant feedback and instant interaction with what's going on out there live in front of you. So I definitely recommend coming to see a WWE show when we come to your town. Absolutely. Uh, staying on the WWE stuff here, uh, ZJast412 says, who would you want to face at WrestleMania this year? Two Cold Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to face three Two Cold Scorpios so it can be us versus <laughs> Team... Six Cold Scorpio. <laughs> uh, let's go through this. Um, can you actually play trombone, says Co-op Wilson. Yes, yeah, so I've been playing trombone since sixth grade. Um, I wanted to learn how to play drums. And so when you're in middle school, uh, they bring you into like, they brought you in like the auditorium and they tell us, oh, you know, here, we're going to pick what instruments you play. And so when they said, hey, if you want to play percussion, come with us. I had no idea what percussion was. Yeah. I didn't know the word at the time. And so that got skipped over. And then I hear them doing drum stuff. And I was like, oh, I want to play drums. They're like, oh, well, it's too late now. And it's like, but the door is right. It's like when you're, when you're five minutes too late for the airplane. For the airplane. And like the door's right there. Like, yeah, but it's closed. I'm like. But you can open it, like, no. Mm. And so that's what happened to me with drums. It, which, so this completely changed my life. So uh, I was like, oh, you know, what? I'll play saxophone because that's like I like sexy Sex jazz sexy, music. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe get in with the ladies with some sweet jazz. Try to make a sound on it. Read instrument for all you band nerds out there. I couldn't make a sound. Um, so then they handed me a mouthpiece and I was able to make a buzz noise. Mm -hmm. And he goes, okay, cool. Which size which size mouthpiece would you like? I was like this one. He goes, okay, cool. You play trombone. I was like, wait, what? He's like. <laughs> He's like, it makes this noise. Like, it's like a big slide whistle. What? He's like, yeah, slide here. Whistle. And then like, so I, I kind of didn't want to do it at first, but I was like, you know what? Let me try it out. And then maybe like six months in, I was practicing like every day and loved it. And we were like winning stuff at festival. Oh, wow, that's in, awesome. Yeah, dude, I was in like jazz band. I was like deep in. Really? Yeah, all the way up through college. And then I really didn't play that much. And then it came back to me. But I give a few notes here and there while I'm on TV. And they're, they're the right ones. Yeah. A little Final Fantasy Just, Victory music. Yeah. A little, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I can I can pretty much play stuff by ear if I have like five, ten minutes oh. um, to like to try it out. But uh, but you're only get not you're not gonna get a full concert unless uh, somebody comes with some of this. <laughs> you need then that you get, you get the real skills. Uh, Toby says, tell us about your PhD. So I don't have a PhD. I was gunning for it. Long story short, uh, this this is coming up recently, in like the past two months. Um, so, what was it? I guess like two years ago, the school that I was going to, we found out there was like a, a weird money situation where students were just like getting money funneled 
into the school and then not getting anything for it. So we're like, that's oh, no. that's like stealing money from students and just keeping them in school and not passing them. Mm, that's not a good thing. Mm -mm. So there's like a big class action lawsuit against them um, from what I understand and it just didn't go well because they're like the largest money making institution like in the world, one of them. And so, uh, so I transferred and the school that I ended up going to said, well, you need 100 credits from our institution in order to get the PhD. But I was at the end of the program, like I had like three months left, but they're like, well, this will add like three years. We can only test you through to certain classes. So like oh, you can man. you can maybe get like, I don't know, 15 credits through just you testing. You the PH, but not the D. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And I'm trying to get the D. <laughs> you trying, you gotta get that D. Gotta get the D. <laughs> uh, so, so the advisor was like, well, with your transcripts and everything, like you've already taken all the classes, so you have the knowledge. So it's, it just, it's up to you if you wanna pay us to give you a piece of paper that says, People have to call you doctor. And that's really the only reason I was doing it in the first place. Yeah, because it's like, dope as fuck. Yeah. My dad was like, it's like wearing a huge hat of a middle finger that you never have to take off. Mm -hmm. And everyone has to look at. Because I just really I just really wanted to be a situation where it's like, someone's like, oh, hey, Austin. I'd be like, well, doctor. Austin. Doctor Austin. Just for no reason. Just to be a I dick. love it, man. But uh, they're like, oh, it's another three years. And I was like, you know what? I've got two undergraduate degrees and masters and I have like I have the knowledge and wherewithal and the only thing that I really want to do with it is be like a school counselor or like work with children mm -hmm. dealing with autism so like you don't necessarily need your PhD for that so it's just a thing it would be like a cool achievement um, I definitely I, uh, I'm an advocate for getting to that level because it is awesome and it does teach you great time management. Um, and so uh, if you are interested in graduate school, I, I would definitely recommend it. But make sure that you do a ton of research and make sure that the school is right for you. A uh, Kind of Funny Games writes in, mm -hmm. aka Cool Gray, <laughs> and says, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Simpsons Hit and Run on PlayStation 2? It's been so long since I played that game, but I feel like I remember enjoying it a lot. I haven't even of thought fun. of that game. That was the, yeah. the GTA-style <laughs> Simpsons game, for those of you that aren't aware. You can catch Cool Greg streaming it <laughs> on, on weeknights. Whole lot of game shit. <laughs> Have you oh, seen uh, the stuff on Twitter about front-facing Simpsons characters? No. You realize you only see Simpsons characters from the side on the show, so they drew them like facing from the front, and it's... Terrifying. Really? Yeah. It's like what nightmares are made of. Oh my god. I can imagine. That's uh, so weird. Let's let's see. I want some give me some gold here, guys. Blanket Fort 83 says, Austin, do you still play Pokemon Go? And what's your favorite Pokemon? I do not play Pokemon Go anymore. And the reason is we, so okay, when Pokemon Go dropped, I gave it like four, five months. I was playing as if it were my job. By like the I think Pokemon came out on like a Thursday, and then that Monday on Raw, like I was already level like 22. Oh my god! I we we had shows in New York. Oh, because you're traveling all. Yeah, like you're, yeah, and you're I, getting I just, them left and right. I get to the hotel at like two in the morning, and so we got to hotel in Times Square. I remember at 2 a.m. I walked Times Square till 7:30 in the morning just playing Pokemon, and I only went in because I didn't have a charger from my phone. Um, so like I was devout. I, it's one of the two phone games I've actually spent like money on. It's like that and Puzzle Fighter. Uh -huh. So like I was in, Puzzle Fighter, and man, what I classic. wanted to do, yeah, right. I wanted to be able to travel and get these like specific Pokemon from different countries, different regions, and be like, oh, cool, I, I can collect all these because mm -hmm. I can travel. But I wanted to be able to collect or get multiples, bring them back to my friends in Atlanta, and trade them. Uh, smart. The thing with Pokemon that uh, the alluring thing to me, <coughs> excuse me, is being able to trade Pokemon with your friends, and you still can't trade. So once they got like, even now, yeah. Come on, man. So like it, it it hurt me so bad. So like I waited for like two updates to pass, and they're like, oh, they're not gonna. It didn't look like they're gonna add trading. So like I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm out. I I, I don't yeah. I don't want it. It, just, it was just painful to me. But my favorite Pokemon um, is mm, I switch back and forth between like Vulpix and Ninetales. But it's hard. It depends on the how cute I feel that day. Or the classy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll go I'll go Vulpix right now. Feeling sentimental. I love Geodude. Geodude's it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is hella crazy. <laughs> gotcha says, hey Austin, you should tell the story about you and Cody Rhodes being rivals during high school wrestling. That's such a long story. I'll tell it. Quickly. What's the Twitter version? The Twitter version. For, uh, wait, I almost said 140 characters, but 280, 280 characters. characters. So uh, Cody Rhodes and I went to rival high schools. He went to Lassiter and I went to Sprayberry and we did not like each other. Um, and he, to me, okay, so... Uh, 
we would have tournaments on the weekends, and we'd see uh, like Dusty Rhodes would be there, and then like DDP came once, and like Kevin Nash and Scott, all these all these WCW guys would come, and like these were guys that I like idolized. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, this is this is incredible, and so in my head, if I so he was at the time two weight classes above me, uh, I said if I bump up and weight, wrestle him and beat him, then all these guys will see it and they'll be like, okay, we're gonna train you because you're gonna be the best wrestler ever. And that was, that was why it was my plan to get into pro wrestling. I, got, I had to beat Cody Rhodes in amateur wrestling. So uh, I bump up two weight classes so I have to beat all the guys on my team in both those weight classes and then get through like a tournament of like, I had to wrestle two guys to get to him. So all, these guys have like 25 pounds on me at yeah. the time. Uh, and so I felt really good about myself. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm running this. This is fantastic. But it's like one of the hardest things ever because I don't know if you, if you ever amateur wrestled. No. It's a full human trying to like exert their dominance on you. Like it is not easy to do that to someone who's like 20 pounds heavier than you. Mm-hmm. So anyway, get to Cody uh, and I'm winning. I'm crushing him. And then I look over at all his teammates and his coaches and his family, and they've got these these tears in their eyes, this sadness. And I don't wanna bring that sadness upon them. This isn't what I wanted. I want them to be excited for the new generation, me, a wrestler. And I realized if I beat them, then they're all gonna be sad and my plan's not gonna work. So you know what? I, I let him get one point above me and I let him win. And it was one of those things that, you know, it's it's it goes down in history like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is some shit. Yeah. Yeah, and he knows this. <laughs> he knows this. Cody, come on, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> Next time you're in San Francisco, why don't you come through kind of funny? Ooh, shots fired, son. <laughs> uh, Rob5987 says, Austin, why haven't you been a guest voice on Steven Universe yet, and what will it take to make it happen? Bro, ask Rebecca Sugar. I want in. Let's make it I happen, want guys. She, when I met her, it was a very, very intense day for me. So there's some times where, uh, I remember specifically, we were in Germany doing a show, and when we came out of the curtain, there was this like 15-year-old boy, and he was losing his mind, and he was crying. And it's it's still crazy to me that we have that effect on people sometimes, but then I remember like, that was that was me, I'd be losing my, my mind too. But like, the tears were streaming down his face, and I was like, what does it take for someone that you don't know to have the effect of, of bringing you to tears when you see them, not even meet them, see them. Just see them, yeah. And so I was at Comic-Con, I cosplayed as Garnet. So like I boxed my hair out and I had the whole deal on. And while I did that, I met um, uh, Samantha Newark, who was the voice of Jim and Jim and the Holograms. Oh man. Possibly my favorite cartoon ever. (laughs) Music is incredible. So fantastic, the theme song is great. God, it's incredible. So I got to meet her and she was so nice, hugged me, uh, had like a signed picture for me, had like a gem necklace for me. Like I was, I was so, I was like giddy. I was like a schoolgirl, so happy. And then not like an hour later, I'm at this restaurant trying to get in, um, but it's like packed out. So we're about to leave and as we turn around, uh, my friend is like, oh, she wants to meet you. Uh, it, was one, it was one of the uh, people who does music on Steven Universe, because I talked to them, chatted, it's awesome. like, oh, she wanted to say hi to you too. And I turn around, and like as close as we are right now, I turn around, it's Rebecca Sugar. And dude, like, I don't know what came over me, like, legit, just started crying. Really? I couldn't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was too much for me, and like, before we even said hello, I was just like, <sighs> and I, I became a mess, just a pile. What but was her reaction? She was so nice. Just That's super awesome. cool, uh, but I think it's because that show, if you watch Steven Universe, you completely understand this story I'm about to tell. I was on an airplane watching an episode and Steven finds something out about his mom and the way that they write the show, they don't like mean for it to be emotional, it just is, because mm-hmm. it's very real. Um, Steven finds something out about his mom that you don't, he as a child doesn't realize later in life, like that's gonna be so important to him. And so I'm just crying, like openly weeping on this international flight that's like 14 hours and like, not like a, like, I'm, <gasps> and so people can hear me. I got headphones in, and this woman next to me, this adult woman, she taps me, she goes, sir, are you all right? And her sitting next to her is her daughter, who's like in her teens, and she looks over, and she goes, mom, he's watching Steven Universe, you wouldn't understand. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so, you wouldn't understand. Yeah. So Rebecca Sugar to me, she's like, she is the embodiment of pure, amazing emotion and I, just when I saw her, I lost it. So I, I want to be a voice on that show so bad. One of my friends drew me as Steven Universe character, uh-huh. and I, I want it. I want it to happen. 
I'm like, I need it to happen. If you guys, you best friends, our best friends, my best friends, if you can just like tweet at Rebecca Sugar that you want to get me as a voice on Steven Universe, even just once. Bring back Tiger Millionaire. He's, do you watch the show? I have not. I've, okay. I've seen clips of it, and it's definitely on the list. It's of so like, good. It looks great. Tiger Millionaire is like Steven's wrestling persona. Uh-huh. And they oh, did a wrestling man. episode. So just do another wrestling episode and get me in if it's like that. Or it doesn't have to be wrestling at all. I can be friends with the mailman. He's a great character. Dude, I can I can be... I can do, I can do whatever. I can come eat at the donut shop, just be in the background. I just... I want to be on Steven Universe so bad. Please. <laughs> I'm begging. Help him out, guys. You know who to tweet. Sweet nasty love. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I, I there's anybody that I would burst into tears meeting yeah. or seeing. But there's definitely people that have made me like a fucking emotional wreck. Yeah. Like a story I've told before, but Bernie Burns mm-hmm. from uh Rooster Teeth, <laughs> yeah. like founder of Rooster Teeth, I idolized him. Looked up to him. I do what I do because of him in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. I was at IGN, we were working, and I was maybe three or four years into IGN at the time. And uh, our friend Ashley Jenkins, uh, who worked there as well, was on the social team. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Twitter and did all the social network stuff. And one night, uh, we were going out for dinner. She's like, oh, hey, like, uh, my boyfriend is is coming over. Do you guys want to meet him? We'll all go to dinner and whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. So we go out. We're getting dinner, getting drinks. And her boyfriend wasn't there yet. And we just keep drinking, keep eating. It was it a was good time. And then all of a sudden, her boyfriend came. And I look over, and it was Bernie Burns. <laughs> and I was like, what? The, like, that's fucking Bernie. Like, I, Alfredo was next to me. I'm like, dude, that's fucking Bernie. Like, that's fucking Bernie. Why is he here? Why is he in San Francisco? This doesn't make any sense. And then I just see Ashley, like, look at me and just start laughing. She was just like, I knew. I knew. I was like, god damn it. I, I was so uncomfortable because I was not prepared yeah. for it, you know? Yeah. And then I, then I spent the whole night just like, don't, don't make too much eye contact. Yeah. Don't talk too much, but don't, you know, don't be quiet. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, be comfortable. Be cool. <laughs> I think I worked it. I think it worked it out. <laughs> you, you and Bernie Burns, the two alumni of Kind of Funny Live hosting. Ah. He hosted KFL 2, he hosted ah. KFL 3, Troy Baker, KFL 1. We got a good, good string <laughs> going here. All right, let's get a couple more here. Um, people are saying, uh, who do we need to tweet at? Let's find it. It's Rebecca Sugar. So let's find her Twitter. Rebecca Sugar. I believe it's just at Rebecca Sugar. Yeah, it's at Rebecca Sugar. So at R E B E C C A S U G A R. What are we asking her, man? Yeah. Yeah. Let, so let Xavier weird, huh? Woods PhD at Xavier Woods PhD, right? Yes. In yes, that's, my, that's my Twitter. At Xavier Woods PhD. I, okay, so letters are weird to me. Do you realize this? That you don't have to say the alphabet in the order that we've learned it in school. What does that mean? It's arbitrary. The alphabet, like in the order that it's in, that's 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 not. Oh, that's just a mnemonic device. Yeah. Like, why is there an order? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. So is the is the reason it's not just a mnemonic device this, so that they can make a song out of it so kids remember it? Just a mnemonic device. Wow. So T being the 20th letter doesn't mean anything. Nope. Zero. It means absolutely nothing. Does that ever mean something? I don't know. No, but like, it's crazy. You why just don't... Like, why did you know that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Why did, let's talk about that. <laughs> well, because my, my name starts with a T, so it's like that's just over time. Like, you know, kids used to always do that shit where it's like, oh, like, if you add up the numbers, like, that's how much, like, money you're going to make. Because the seventh letter, G, that's like its own, that's its own thing. That doesn't have its own, no, <laughs> it only has its own thing because your name starts with G. It's holding lines, magazines, the seventh letter, G, like, I keep it G, I keep seventh letter. That's a thing. I'm I keep sure. it seventh letter? No, nah, but, like, it's. People say that. I've never heard that. Third letter is like another way of saying, never mind, I'll leave y'all alone. <laughs> I'll keep a 20th letter. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, that just so Yeah, I want to try to learn the alphabet in a different way. That, man. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, sorry, it's the alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. Yeah. So like if you're putting things in ABC order. Yeah. That, that, that's the only thing I can think of, though. Oh, yeah, but that's only a... Th- that's only a thing because we made the alphabet yeah. thing in that way. <laughs> Could you do the alphabet backwards? No. 
Because I've seen there's those challenge videos of people trying yeah. to do it quickly. If you race someone else and if you fuck up, you have to start over again. Oh, oh my God. It's yeah. very stressful. I literally, I can only do it forward. <laughs> Jordan Ignatius says, who would you compare Biggie and Kofi to in the Kind of Funny crew? I would say, uh, let's see. Oh, Is there any analog? I, I don't know. No. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I don't think it. <laughs> no, all all parties are extremely different. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy all of them very much. Uh, Lovin says, so with the convention year and tournament scene starting up for 2018, outside of Dragon Con, what conventions and events are you hyped for? Uh, awesome Con in D.C. at the end of March. Um, obviously, Evo coming up. Um, uh, South by Southwest, GDC. Um, psh- that's, oh, MomoCon in Atlanta. It's like oh, an anime awesome. convention. Are you going to GDC? Yeah. Oh, shit. So you're yeah. coming back. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, Blanket483 says, I'm the Ash Ketchum of saying the alphabet backwards. So does that mean that you catch them all? You catch them and then release them at the least convenient yeah. times and then get into the finals and lose spectacularly? Because yeah. I don't really Come remember. Come on, Ash. Ash is very, like, Danny LaRusso to me. Like, he like wins, but it's not like pretty. Mm-mm. It's, it's like, always some bullshit. Yeah, like real accidental type stuff. <laughs> but he lets the Butterfree go. And Why? Yeah, dude, Butterfree. Butterfree is my favorite Pokemon. Let me scratch the Vulpix. Butterfree is the best. Shout out to Butterfree. I love Butterfree. Although Butterfree makes no sense when you look at it. Like I understand the caterpillar to butter butterfly that makes sense, but it looks like a Venonat yeah. evolution. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, the original 150 had some weird design choices in yeah, some ways. But they're so near and dear to my oh heart. My God, of course. Um, did uh, Maybe you guys can answer this. Did Ash ever pay Misty back for her bike? There is an episode, I want to say, in like season five or something. Like It's, it's pretty well past uh, the, the original crew. Yeah. I remember seeing a clip, and it's her, it's Misty, Ash, and Brock, and they reunite at some point, and then they all go their separate ways, and there's like... This this trail that it's like a fork in the road, but with like straight left and right, mm-hmm. and they all go on different paths. And he gives her a bike. Okay. And it's just like, oh my god! And they do this the montage of okay. them all. It's okay, good, it's fantastic. I'm gonna say because if he didn't, ashes. Mm, I don't like him. <laughs> um, let's see. I want to do one more good question before we go. Hey man, I just checked hashtags. There's Ella's uh, seventh letters. There ain't no twentieth. <laughs> 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 um, Zyger says, and Zyger, I'm sure, is an authority on this. Ash does give her a new bike, but he eventually ruins another girl's bike. Come on, man. <laughs> this is his MO. He can't keep his stuff together. <laughs> Uh, and finally, I like this one. Dance Floor Demon says, Austin, what's a funny, weird talent you have that you can show us right now? Oh, shit. Funny, <laughs> weird talent. The thing is, I wouldn't put anyone on the spot for that. You're the one man I know that I'm like, I, I can throw that at you and you'll like bring you up something. something. All right. <laughs> See? So I can roll my stomach? Oh, my God. Ooh. Move your body like a snake, ma. So even if it So yeah. A little R. Kelly action. Ooh. That's that's my weird Funny weird talent. talent. Yeah. I don't know if that counts. That definitely counts, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This has been uh, oh my god, the tips, yes. Yeah, tips. Tips. I feel like oh, and the giveaway. Like that's on giveaway. Me. CJ Rock32 from Twitch is the winner. Congratulations, you've won Slain back from hell on Ooh. the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and then, yes, getting the tips. Thank you, cool Greg. Hey, CJ Rocks, my homie, man. He's a huge wrestling fan. Shout him out real quick. Dave, that'd be cool. Shout out to CJ Rocks. Shout out to CJ Rocks. Thank you. What's up, Kev? Did you do the tips? I fucked up now. I'm doing them now. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a long time with this show. I just give it to Nick, and like I've been like, oh, the morning show is wiped from my mind. <laughs> uh, let's see, Thursday. That's today. The postman says, just want to thank Austin for being the one who got me into wrestling and turned me into a huge fan. I hope to see you wrestle in person for the first time next week in Green Bay. Oh, Wisconsin. perfect. Okay, that's where SmackDown will be. And uh, our good friend Mike Daniels from the Green Bay Packers will most likely be there, who is a huge otaku. He's like one of the top 100 players in the league. He's a lineman, and he's, he's just a weeb. He's big. He's so 
big. But yeah, he loves loves anime, That's and it's awesome. it's great. Anime is a special thing. Yeah. My dog, Nick96, says, I'm not going to spoil the new Patreon episode of the VR show, but thank you so much. My dad had a major surgery yesterday, and this really cheered me up. I'm glad to say he's doing well. Awesome. Good, good. Keep rocking, Nick. That boy, Tito, says, welcome back again, Kamish. Another reminder, since Nick isn't here today, that today is KF Do It Day. I wanted to share my playlist with Cool Greg. So it's in there, and it's a title playlist. What's KF Do It oh, Day? Man. KF Do It Day. Uh, Kev, can you explain what KF Do It Day is? Because I don't know exactly what it is. I just know that it's... <laughs> I think... I mean, I... Oof, it's it's the, the Jackman Off thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's not just Jackman Off thing. It's it's also, like, the stand-up thing. It's so like Nick, Nick to wanted to get healthier today, yeah. and to start doing jujitsu and to start, you know, training and weightlifting and doing all that mm-hmm. stuff. And he also wanted to do stand-up comedy. Yeah. So I think Camp Do It Day is... Is it... Oh, it's the first of the month. That's first what it is. Month, on the yeah. first of the month, it's like, the that thing you want to do, do it. Go okay. out there. Get it done. Camp Do It okay. Day. Awesome. I like that. Ruben Avocado says, I demand all sorts of sports. Also, shout out to Kevin the Milkman Coelho. We need more airtime for that guy. It's true. Got some. It's true. Got you some, just baby. got some. Uh, and Andy's gone, so unfortunately, you will not get all sorts of sports. Panzer G2 says, Mr. Xavier Woods, any plans to collab with Mega Round anytime soon? Also, Gamescast yesterday might be the best one I've ever seen. Thanks for everything Ooh. you guys do. Ooh, I agree, it was very really good. Uh, hopefully, you'll see Mega Round soon. Uh, as far as like collaborations, um, I don't know, hopefully we'll, I mean, we'll probably like film some stuff, playing video games, um, but I'm not doing anything musically. <laughs> musically. <laughs> right now. Oh yeah? Who is going to the concert? It's somewhere. I think it's the Elbow Room. Okay. Oh, the Elbow Room. Yeah. I get I it. I love that you guys got Mega Ran involved in the, was it Raw sometime? Oh, yeah. yeah. We had the rap battle. That was Because he, awesome. he was in the area, and I was, he, so he's coming to the show, and uh, then they were like, oh, you know, you have like a, like a crew of people for the rap battle, and I was like, can I get my friend in? They're like, yeah, sure. And I was like, Ren, do you want to be on SmackDown? <laughs> he texted me like, what? So tight. Like, yeah, come so, through. So, <laughs> so tight. Uh, Ignacio Rosas, first here's a fun clip. And then Xavier, how many push-ups do you do? All of them. How many yes. sit-ups? <laughs> what kind of juice, what kind of juice <laughs> do you do? That is a really good answer. Uh, Panzer G2 says, where's Kevin? Is Xavier Woods willing to bongo Kevin? That is not going to happen today, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe at some point in the future, but the not, not today. expired. You have to earn more. <laughs> oh. McTreats50495 cheered. Times 1,000? Is that something we do? I think it's 500, yeah, so it's $10. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Goofy Movie Questions. What's Ooh. your favorite song, favorite scene, and who is the biggest rock star on the planet? Still watch the VHS monthly. Oh, my God, you watch the VHS? Yes. Monthly, yeah. Yeah, and I listen to the soundtrack once a week minimum. <laughs> Best Disney movie I ever. Proof. Boom. Uh, biggest rock star on the planet, obviously. Powerline. Uh, favorite scene from the movie. Okay, so emotional is the high dad soup scene. Oh, when that's... they have the moment and they're on the same page and all that stuff happens. Uh, but best scene, it. Ah, it's it's difficult because the last scene when they're at the concert, and but Goofy walks into that woman's dressing room. And does that weird, like, grabbing his nose, twirling his ear thing. Hilarious. But then, <laughs> the first scene where Max is dressed as Powerline, Ooh. and Roxanne is getting all, like, like oh, oh. all over him. Yo, oh, I wanted to do that so bad. And so that is my favorite scene as well. And guess what? I did it. At kind what? Of funny life. Well, I kind of funny oh, life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And entirely inspired yes. by that yes. scene where I was just like, we're doing this shit. Because the, uh, the fucking friend, it's Kevin. The friend in the <laughs> bag with the cheese. <laughs> it's, oh, I, love, I love it so much. And for some reason, the scene in that movie that really stands out to me is the possums. Yes, oh, when dude. They, when they go to that dude. fucking weird Winter's show. Winter's Possum Park. <laughs> oh, don't you want to be? Uh-huh, I'll hang from a tree. Uh-huh, we're mighty glad to see you. And the parking's always free. Here at Lister's pa, 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 Possum Park. You I wish we could end the show there, but we can't. <laughs> Gotta keep going with the tips. Uh, Dressboard says, Tim, please just do the reacts to your name already. Don't make me send you guys a copy of the movie. Also, here's a fun clip. And Cool Greg, what's good? Um, we're going to get to that in a sec. Cool Greg nods send in approval. Send us a copy. We won't watch it. Gamers X says, Tim, I sent you an email in January about something we talked about, KFL3. I was wondering if you got it. Thanks for all you guys do. Uh, I do not think so. So send me it again, please. My email is a disaster. <laughs> um, that's it. That is it for the tips. So let's check out the fun clips. Oh, this one's an oldie but a goodie. 
One of my favorite things to ever happen. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! <laughs> it's Clefairy! <laughs> so good. Oh, guys. I, I have not seen this one. Oh, this is good. I didn't hear she farts. When she I didn't hear it fart either. Sorry. Oh, can we pump up the ball? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Come on, guys. Can I? We've all been there. Can, I, we've all been can there. I suggest a clip? Yes. Does it have to be a certain length, or can it be like a minute and a half? If you can vouch for it. Okay. Uh, type in McDonald's gospel song. Yeah, the first one. Minute nine seconds. This, I don't, for some reason, this is one of the funniest things on the on this earth to me. God. For multiple reasons, I like the video. One, because they, they're singing and it's so good, but the guy who's with him, next to him, keeps trying to outdo him the whole time. <laughs> so like, here, watch. Here, let him let it ride again. With the audio. Oh, okay. Yeah! Oh, from the beginning. No, no, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> he echoes everything and then tries to do it better than him. <laughs> so good. Oh, oh man. Oh, that, that was fantastic. Austin, thank you very much for joining us yesterday and today. We had a lot of great content. Again, we got Gamescast coming tomorrow on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Definitely worth the dollar. Um, and you can find him on youtube.com slash up, up, down, down. Bam. And follow us on socials at up, up, down, down without the O's. You can follow me specifically. Mm. At Xavier Woods PhD. DMs stay open, baby. Slide what in them, thanks. And you can follow me on Snapchat. Used food. It's different than the other ones. Ooh, that mm. sounds fun. It's super disturbing. Used food <laughs> would be so uncomfortable. Well, until next time. <laughs> it was I my gunbound name. <laughs>